and welcome. Today I am going to be giving you five tips on how to write your own chord songs. I'm also going to be sharing with you five chord songs that I wrote myself and I'm going to be explaining to you a little bit uh, how I wrote them. So if you've been following the series, you're ready to go, you have your chords list in hand, and you're ready to start writing some songs. If you are new to the channel and this might be your first time here, welcome. Um, I hope that you're able to still get some songwriting tips out of the things that we're talking about. I think you'll be able to. Um, but also consider checking out the previous video where we talk specifically about our chords list and we update that. And uh, feel free to follow the series if you're, uh, if you're interested. Um, if you find the video helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps out a lot. Um, check out the playlist um, associated with this if you want to follow this series specifically. Um, other than that, let's get started. Tip number one, define your parameters. So to start, it's always good to define your parameters. Uh, what this means is that we're just going to be defining our intentions. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish? What are our goals with uh, whatever we're trying to write? This is going to help us to narrow down the ideas a little bit, and it's going to help us to not be staring at just a blank page. So as far as my writing is concerned with the little pieces that I wrote, one of my goals was I wanted each one of our the pieces that I wrote to be eight bars long. The examples that we've been working in in the Mel Bay Modern Guitar Method Grade 1 book so far, many of them have been eight bars long, so I wanted to model my chord songs off of some of the pieces that were in that book. So I have that defined. Okay, all of my pieces are going to be eight bars long, nice and easy. It gives me the ability to get an idea, expand on it a little bit, and close that idea. Another one of my parameters is going to be I want to be in either 4-4 four, four time or 3-4 time. Those are the big like uh, time signatures that we've been studying so far. So let's uh, let's not go too crazy and write something completely crazy. Even if you want to, you can. Um, so that's another one of my parameters. So my real intention with trying to write these pieces are I'm trying to write chord songs. So I'm working on chord outlining and trying to set up solid chord progressions. So I'm going to limit my scale usage. I'm not just going to have my melodies just be a whole bunch of scale runs, um, as, as you saw. And in my first example, I just said, okay, let me just take this little chord progression and just kind of take this little, this little thing down and, and do it. close the idea and I have that solid little cadence and that's my first little piece tip number two use your master list So tip number two is going to be using our list of chords. And if you're new to the channel, uh, maybe your list of chords isn't exactly what we've been working on here, but that just kind of goes into what's your vocabulary? What have you been working on? Um, along the way, I've been saying, hey, let's experiment with some, where some of these chords go and find some stuff that we 
that we think is really strong movement into each other. One that I keep talking about. I just really like that. I feel like that. It, I feel like it's really strong. So um, I've just been kind of taking note of that. I've also been taking note of some of the chords that we've been learning that share quite a few notes, like our D minor, A, C, and F. That that's F major. Excuse me. Good grief. Into D minor, A, D, and F. Excuse me. They only have one note difference, that's the point. So just taking note of that, C major and A minor, there's only one note difference between the two. C, G, C, E, and G, and then A, C, and E for A minor. So I've been experimenting with that. And also remembering that our melody note does not necessarily need to be um, the root of the chord. Our melody note could be that fifth, could be that G, there in that little chord progression. It just kind of feels like that that fifth note, that G, that C, and that D, feel like they're the melody there. So just taking note of some of those things. Tip number three, start with the end. So for tip number three, I'm going to actually say, let's start with the end. So if we've been doing this, we already have our paper and we've already mapped out that we want to have eight bars and we already have those bar lines in, in place. Everything's ready to go. We know what time soon sure we're going to be playing in. We already know all these things. Now we have um, different vocabulary in our ears, different things that are attracting us. Um, from our list of chords that we that we've been making. So now that we have that, let's actually start with the end. Um, here, here's a little bit of a tip. So if you want, if you're trying to go somewhere, and that's that's really the point with these exercises, is we're trying to start somewhere and take it somewhere. So if you're trying to go somewhere, it's always good to know where you're trying to go. So if I wanted to go to the gas station. I have to decide what gas station I want to go to. I don't want to just start driving and hope that I come across a gas station eventually. I want to know what gas station I want to go to. And the same thing could be true here. So instead of starting at the beginning of the piece, we already have the, the skeleton of our piece written out a little bit because we have our bar lines. Now instead of starting at the beginning, we're actually going to start at the end. And in uh, the second piece that I played, I, I really liked this little cadence idea. It's that same thing that I was just talking about, this G7 to the C major. Okay, that was attracting my ear. So how can I take this and make it mine in some way, and how can I play it uh, melodically? And that really helps me to, uh, now I have half of, or not half, but now I have two measures of my piece already written. So now I can actually start on measure three and measure four, and I can say, is there some kind of a way that I can mirror my strong cadence in a different way? And that's actually what I did. I have a G7 chord going to a C, and I go. So 
now I have two little cadence ideas. Now I have half of my piece written. So my first little cadence is going to go like this. And my second one is going to go like this. And their rhythms mirror each other as well. Now I, now I have to decide where I'm going to start, and our pieces have been in C major so far, so let's just keep it to C major. That's on our master list. Nothing wrong with that. Let's just outline the entire chord. We need to work on getting clarity on all of those notes anyway. So that's a perfect opportunity for that. Let's go, let's go into F. And let's give us the opportunity to work on that little half bar that we've been working on. Now I want to go somewhere a little bit different because I want to keep it a little bit interesting. What if I outlined an A minor chord and put a G in there as well? Another thing that I've pointed out has been the similarity between A minor, A minor, and F. So let's actually utilize that because I like that sound. Tip number four find a concept. So tip number four is going to be find a concept. Um, in one of our examples that we were doing in the book, uh, I believe the exercise was running the chord, opened with a, a C major chord and then an outline and this rhythm. And I kind of liked that, but I actually wasn't as much of a fan of where the exercise went, but I really enjoyed kind of playing that little, that little idea. So what I did is I took, I changed, instead of playing the E, G, and C version, our middle C version of C, I'm going to, I'm going to pick the upper part and I'm going to play that same rhythm. Then I'm going to go A minor, and I'm going to expand on this idea. This is, this is kind of the idea of using the source material. Um, like if we are doing Michael Rose about a shore, we want to consider the source material. And it's really kind of the same thing here, um, except for now our source material is um, ideas that we've been coming up with and the exercises that we've been working on in the book. Tip number five, what do you need to work on? And on to tip number five, I'm going to say, what do you need to work on? Um, we're actually going to go back and look at one of my previous examples um, and something that I always end up talking about is that the longer tones give me trouble, right? That's something that I know that I struggle with. So one of these pieces I really specifically said, okay, let me write one of these that has specifically long tones 
in it to give me the opportunity to work on something that I know that I need to work on. Right, and really trying to make that be as solid as I can possibly make it. Um, so as far as, you know, trying to, that's really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to pinpoint some things that we know are not our strongest thing. And instead of, and we're taking, instead of taking like a, um, a more like, uh, mundane approach to working on the things that we know that we need to work on, let's take a creative approach to working on the things that we know that we need to work on. So as far as I, that's one concept that I know that uh, is weak in my playing is sometimes, you know, I have, I have the, I have the big lick, but then, you know, the half note at the end isn't where it needs to be. Um, something like that. Those are always things that I run into trouble with. So in trying to write some of these little exercises for myself, I don't want to just utilize all of the things that I do well. I also want to put some things in here that I know are going to be challenges for me. So I can use my own material and things that I'm creating to get myself to become a better guitar player and a better musician in general. So I have one bonus piece of advice. If you're still sitting here and you're still staring at a blank piece of paper, my biggest piece of advice for you is just write. Stuff on the page is always better than stuff not on the page. If you have thing if you put something down on the page, you have something that you can start working with. You have something that you can start manipulating into. Even if you're like, oh, okay, I really am not a huge fan of this idea. Let me write it down anyway and see, uh, see if I can take it someplace. Um, so that's really like the, the biggest thing is just start writing you know if it ends up being kind of a stinker that's totally fine some of these along the process that i tried to write uh, really didn't go where i wanted them to and that's totally fine you either you can just move on with them and it's just uh it's just no big deal and then hopefully along the along the path you end up finding some of these things that you do really like that you're like oh okay i, I actually really kind of like that and the cool thing is is now that's your idea. That's something that you created. You took source material, you took informed ideas, and you decided to create your own thing around it. And to me, that's, um, that's one of the most important things, is being able to come up with your own ideas uh, with things. That's what I talk about in here pretty much all the time. So finding a way to express what you're trying to express uh, with music. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope that you're having a great day out there. Um, this week, uh, we're going to be talking about taking some of the chords that we've been talking about, and now we're going to be harmonizing uh, popular melodies that you might be uh, familiar with. So we're going to be doing Let It Be, and we're going to be doing Don't Panic by Coldplay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so we're going to be doing those. Um, it's hopefully going to be a lot of fun. We're going to utilize, again, the chords that we've been learning, some of the things that we've been learning in the book, and we're going to kind of modernize them a little bit, and we're going to take a little bit of a uh, 2021 approach to it. So uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.